<sighs> you know what? I didn't have any coffee this morning. That's my problem. That's why I can't wake up. Hey there, creepy peeps, and happy Halloween. The best day of the year is here, and I am not in costume. <laughs> Ah, so <laughs> I planned on filming all my Halloween week videos in my costume, which I guess it doesn't even matter because it really wasn't even a costume. <clears throat> here I thought I was being all responsible and here I'll start my laundry before I film my videos and then I can get my laundry done today too. And I put half my costume in the laundry, the important half, the top half. <laughs> So that was dumb on my part. So anyways, we're just gonna film the video. I didn't turn on the Halloween lights either. What is wrong with me today? I'm tired. Hold on, we gotta fix this. Ugh! Motherfucking Halloween. Plug in the fucking lights. And one. And two. There we go. Oh, that's much better. Not that you can really tell anyway because it's daytime. Super smart up here. Okay, so today, well, you've already read the title, so you know what we're doing. But you may have noticed at the beginning of this month, I did not post a creepy book club video like I normally do on the first Monday in the month because I was saving it for today. A creepy book club special. I don't know why I said club like that. Um, <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about The Halloween Tree by Ray Bradbury because I, I don't... Woo! And I dropped the book. Ugh. This video is going great so far, like really good. So I wanted to read this book for a while. It's quite a short one. Um, because one, it's Halloween themed. Clearly it's called The Halloween Tree. And I've always enjoyed Ray Bradbury's writing. He was one of the authors I remember in high school, all that wonderful required reading. I really liked reading anything by Ray Bradbury. I just, he's got a nice way of writing, man. Like, <laughs> just got a nice way of writing. Um, so the Halloween tree is about a group of boys who obviously on Halloween night go to meet their friend Pipkin, Pipkin. And they go to meet him at this like haunted house type place at the end of town and when Pipkin is on his way to meet them he gets whisked away by something. So the group of boys with the help of the owner of said creepy house, his name is Mound Shroud. Mound Shroud. Mound Shroud, right? Mound? It's Mound Shroud? Just like with the Mound Shroud. Yep, Mound Shroud. What a name. Um, <laughs> Um, and they kind of, with the help of Mount Shroud, they go on a journey through time and space. Sounds like an episode of Doctor Who. Through time and space. Uh, they go on an, they go on an adventure through time and space to save their friend Pipkin. And it's kind of like, it reminds me of A Christmas Carol. You know how, Ebenezer Scrooge goes through like, you know, goes past, present, and future. Um, even though that's about like his own life, this is, it kind of reminds me of that because they're going around through different times, like going back in time and this, that, and the other, and kind of learning about the origins of Halloween along the way, like <laughs> how different, not only how different countries celebrate around the world, but like the origins of the holiday. In that, in that way, I think it's kind of like a cute kind of kids book almost because it's like, it's creepy for Halloween, but it's also slightly educational. Um, <laughs> just slightly, it's not like, it's not overbearing. Um, like I said, Bradbury has a nice way of writing. 
Um, <laughs> he has all of his typical simile, like similes and metaphors to the point of excess. Like it's a lot. Um, he writes very grand in here and it almost, it makes it seem more fanciful. I think like all the elaborate similes and descriptions and language, it just, it makes it all seem more fanciful because I mean, obviously the whole idea of this is fanciful. Like, you know, a boy is traveling to ancient Egypt and Mexico and all this to, and <laughs> It's all very fanciful, so I really, really enjoyed it. It's my first time reading it ever at the age of 23. I've never, ever read this before, even though it is kind of an old book. And I learned, oh, that's the second time I've dropped this. Um, <laughs> there is a cartoon adaptation of this that aired on Cartoon Network. I think it was Hannah, oh, what's it? Barbara? Uh, thank you, phone. What a, you know how I am with names. Um, but it was aired on Cartoon Network in the early 90s, so I might look into watching that this year. I still got, <laughs> not that the time of year would stop me from watching or doing anything Halloween related, but as I'm filming, it's, it's the day before Halloween, so I still have time to watch it and get in the Halloween spirit. So yeah, uh, The Halloween Tree by Ray Bradbury. Very short read. I mean, I consider this short, it's like what, 200 pages? Not even, 140 something pages. I also wanted to quickly talk about another book um, after The Halloween Tree. Um, <laughs> uh, well, this is also kind of a short one. It's just over 200 pages. Um, it's called Pen Pal by these last names, um, Dathan Arbach, maybe? I don't know. Like, the first name is really what I'm concerned about pronouncing. Like, Dathan, I don't know. Um, Dathan, just, um, whatever. You know, you can read it, it's right here. Um, I'll also link it in the description. Uh, I just wanted to include this really quick because it's another short read, and the Halloween tree, while Halloween themed, is not really scary, it's creepy, but it's not really scary. This is actually scary. Um, <laughs> um, it is, like I said, it is kind of short, but it took me so long to read because I was actually quite terrified by this. So, <laughs> I, I typically like to read right before bed. Like, that sounds like such an old lady thing to say. Um, I tried it with this one, and I finished the first, uh, was it the first chapter? with the crawl space, something, boxes, the third chapter, boxes. And I finished, I was finishing that. And the end, the twist, little twist at the end freaked me out so bad that I was like, yeah, we're not reading this at night anymore. Um, so I was like, okay, I'll just read it in the daytime. Um, and I read the next chapter in the daytime, but I was, in the house by myself. Uh, again, freaked me out so bad that I was like, okay, another one, we are not reading this by ourselves. Um, <laughs> so part of what took me so long was that I could only read it <laughs> in the daytime when other people were around. So that kind of took me long, but it's really good. It's based off of a series of posts on Reddit in the no sleep section. That sounds funny. Almost sounds like the restricted section, you know, like from Harry Potter, the no sleep section. Dun, dun, dun. Um, but it started off, it was going, it, uh, 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 it was intended to be just a single post. Uh, it was the first chapter in the book is what the post was, footsteps. Um, and it was so popular that the author, Dathan, whatever your name is, wrote more and <laughs> and then through a, I think, I don't know how accurate this information is, but through a Kickstarter campaign was able to publish it. So here we are with the book. Um, it's really good. It reads, it reads like a Reddit post a little bit. Not that that's a bad thing, um, but it's told in first person, kind of like the, the premise of it is our protagonist, our anonymous 
protagonist is kind of going through his memories as a child like and it's kind of like a one thing leads to another like he remembers this incident this first incident and then that kind of unlocks other memories in his head and he's or it's he's starting to kind of like relate all these incidents through his childhood and kind of realize that they're all related um and it has a very sick twist at the end <laughs> it's it's kind of sad and tragic but it is absolutely terrifying um it makes me very paranoid to read this book um because it deals with without giving too much away um as a young boy in school, our protagonist participated in this pen pal program where they sent off balloons with letters attached and then the idea was somebody would find it and write back and then they'd have a pen pal for a little bit. Well, our protagonist never gets one and he kind of just gets a series of creepy pictures and that leads to this person who is not right in the head stalking our protagonist pretty much to a horrifying extent um <laughs> so it made me awful paranoid and if you're not scared if that sort of thing doesn't terrify you then you probably won't find this as scary as i did the, it's just the fact that this is anything based in reality is going to terrify me like that feasibly could happen to anybody um what happens to this like you know there's, there's nothing fanciful about this one. This one could actually happen and that terrifies the fuck out of me. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is what happens. You know, the internet is a scary place and it comes up with things like this. So, I just wanted to throw that in there at the end because this is an actual scary one. So, if you want something to keep you up at night, I recommend Pen Pal. Um, yeah, so that's it for this special Halloween creepy book club. I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section down below if you have read either or both of those books and let me know what you thought about them. Um, or if you have any other suggestions for creepy books or really good creepy pastas like where Pen Pal came from. Um, you can recommend those down below too. We all need something good and scary to read for Halloween. Feel free to subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more of my face and hear more of my voice. And thank you if you are subscribed already. And until next time, stay strange. Happy Halloween!